pleasure being here. So, we haven't heard a lot about photonic quantum computing, so I guess it's time to bring this on the stage. Um, photonic quantum computing is completely different than what we've heard today. It's different than ion traps, superconducting um, quantum computers. Very special, but it's worth the time to have a look at it. Uh, Quicks Quantum is a startup. We're 20 people located in Enschede in the Netherlands. We have four offices, meanwhile. One in Amsterdam, one in Enschede, and uh, two in Germany, meanwhile. Our vision is really to make something unique and, and scalable. We heard this a lot of times today, how to scale up quantum computing. And we really believe that photonics will lead the second quantum revolution. And, uh, of course, we are half of the company uh, is photonics experts. And um, we have a background. We started in 2019 in Twente. And the Twente University has a clean room, which is specialized on silicon nitride and silicon oxide layers. And our chips... Uh, you can see here a 50 by 50 uh, chip, the newest version, uh, are very lossless. And we don't too much care about something like decoherence and noise. So in photonic quantum computing, the major issue and uh, the major challenge is not to, to lose too many photons. And this is what we take care about. Um, some announcements. We are only 20 people, tiny startup, um, but we currently won a 14 million contract from the German Aerospace Center to build a universal error-corrected quantum computer within the next four years. So the kickoff meeting of this one will be uh, next Wednesday. So we are starting right away, and we will install one of our processes in Ulm at the facility of the DLR, and then we're going to upgrade this within the next four years to a 64-qubit universal quantum computer. And to my knowledge, this is really the, the first order that's coming in worldwide for a universal photonic quantum computer. There will be a nice talk tomorrow at 9.40 from Dr. Robert Axmann from the DLR, and uh, this is really worth the time to have a look at the German ecosystem and what they are doing in terms of funding. The story why we are taking photonics is pretty easy. So um, you all know how a quantum computer like this, the IBM one, looks like and where the chip is. Uh, and you also are aware of the temperatures which you need, the cryogenic temperatures of something like 10 to 20 millikelvin to operate such a chip. Uh, we thought back in 2019 it would be nice to have the same encoded the qubits in photons. And uh, recently there was a nice publication from a Chinese group that they showed something like quantum advantage with a huge interferometer. And you see uh, this looks kind of bulky, but it works at room temperature. So first big advantage of photonic quantum computing is we can operate our processes at room temperature. But it's still bulky. And what we did in 2019, 2020, we designed a chip and put the complete optical table into this tiny little silicon nitride chip. And out of this chip, we meanwhile built a complete photonic quantum computer. This is a special purpose quantum computer you can see on this picture here. It's uh, already up and running in our lab and will be accessible by the cloud soon within the next half year. The core element is one of our photonic processors, and we have a quantum dot which is attached to the processors, and for the readout, a few um, uh, detectors in a fridge, which is cooled to something like 2 to 4 Kelvin only. So we only need a fridge for the detectors, and all the rest is working at room temperature. Uh, by the way, for this setup, we used a quantum dot from uh, Candela, uh, for our boson sampler setup. Uh, they are also here um, at the Q2B, and for, for our knowledge, currently the best single quantum uh, sources or single photon sources on the market. So the source itself is not designed in-house, but we designed the complete process. Recently, I found, found something nice on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, every morning and I'm checking LinkedIn for some quantum news. Uh, and I found this nice comparison uh, from a French guy, so it's, it's in French. Um, and you see, photonic quantum computing has some advantages, but also some neutral points. And advantages, of course, it works at room temperature, or the processes work at room temperature, and the scaling is, is perfectly done. Just by standard telecom polarization maintaining fibers, you can splice, and you can uh, really make a network of a few processes if you would like to. And for today, I just picked out 
the fidelity report. Um, I picked out the gate fidelity to show you just uh, one example how photonic quantum computing is making progress. So, but before I start with this, our product portfolio, we started in 2019 with building those processes. And meanwhile, we are selling them to research institutions and also to companies who want to build their own quantum computer. Um, we introduce, or will introduce the cloud access to our boson sampler next year. Beginning of next year, this machine is up and it's running and it's already creating some results. And in 2027, 2026, 2027, we will have then a universal quantum computer, hopefully. So the plans are there, and um, it's more or less engineering of very lossless multiplexes, lossless sources, um, and, of course, um, finding the right architecture. Let's go into a few details. How does such a process work or look like? Uh, it's pretty easy. There are multiple ways to encode qubits into photons. You can do dual rail encoding. You can use polarization. Uh, you can use continuous variables. You can use discrete variables. So um, photonics offers a lot of solutions how to encode qubits into photons, uh, which sometimes confuses people. Uh, as manipulation, we can just interfere the photons, let them interfere, and we can uh, change the phase. And the computation is either done by measuring the photons, the number of photons, their phase, for example, uh, or just um, measuring and changing the basis. This is done in a, um, in a universal quantum computer setup. And such a processor we are manufacturing, we are selling already, is nothing less than a big interferometer. You have some entry ports, beam splitters, and the red uh, tiny little parts are phase shifters. And a 20 by 20 processor has 20 input ports, a depth of 20 so-called unit cells, and every photon from every input port can interfere with any other photon. So this is more or less the core element of a non-universal quantum computer, so-called boson sampler, and uh, this is already commercially available, this uh, processor. Let's have a look at the specifications because it's not too much about noise. I don't really care about noise. I don't uh, care about decoherence. The photons usually don't change their wavelengths in the processor. Um, I care about losing the photons. And the optical loss is pretty good. Something like three decibel about the complete processor, including the fiber pigtail, including the chip fiber coupling, and so on. And also internal losses are super low. Um, this is from a product that you can see here. Uh, the HERO experiments are much better uh, by a magnitude of order. So propagation loss is something like 0.07 decibel per centimeter and so on. Uh, so we're making very good progress and not losing too many photons. And that means at the same time we can reduce the overhead and we can reduce the effort of error correction very much. And I'll just show you some pictures from our lab how that looks like if we uh, hook up a processor, for example, on our automated test bench, and the first thing that happens is that we automatically tune all the phase shifters that the light just goes through. Something like this. And this is the slide I just wanted to show you. This is the improvement of the fidelity. Um, we, we love to play around a little bit with the processes and let them run overnight, and we just put different unitary matrices on, how random matrices, and so on. And uh, then we distinguish the fidelity of the complete processor. So it's, it's already pretty high. You, you see some 99 point something numbers, and this is measured over the complete processor with 20 unit cells. So if you really want to have the fidelity of, of one unit cell, which corresponds to, to a gate fidelity, more or less, um, it's even higher than the fidelity numbers you can read here. And I think this is the main takeaway message. These photonic processes are good, as they are. They are pretty lossless, but they're becoming better and better with every generation we are putting onto the market. Okay, I'll jump a little bit forward. This was designed for 20 minutes, and I just want to show you something, uh, a measurement-based quantum computer. So this works a little bit different than what you know from superconducting qubits, and from ion traps, what we do is we create a huge cluster state. And there's a, a trick, time multiplexing in photonics, where we can hand over the entanglement to the next clock cycle of photons coming through the processor. And this is usually uh, how it's set up. We create a large entangled cluster state, we apply only single qubit gates, 
and then we measure qubits in a selected basis, and we have a feed forward, and depending on that measurement result, we change the basis. This is more or less the fundamental principle of our universal quantum computer, and I promise this is the last slide I show you. Uh, this is our setup. It's, it's simplified, of course, not to show too many details that we're going to use for the DLR project. As mentioned, uh, the overview talk will be tomorrow at 9.40 here. What we do is we create squeeze light. The video will start again. We create squeeze light in the beginning. That's the plan. And then we only need a tiny little network. We don't need a depth of 20 unit cells or something like this. And this is uh, good. So the universal quantum computer is even more lossless at this stage here. And this is the most important part. This is a delay line. So I will let it run another time. If you look carefully at this delay line, you see that one of those photons here is delayed, whereas the other one is just running through. And this waits for the next one coming. And this is the way we create large cluster states. And um, we don't need 64 input ports, 64 modes, to create 64 qubits. So we can do time multiplexing and create, for example, with 20 input modes, 20 qubits, time delay a few of those, and uh, make a huge cluster state in time. This is the trick about photonic quantum computing. Um, I think it's, it's very mighty. It's a very smart approach. Um, and hopefully in three to four years, we will have a mighty machine of several hundred qubits with this. Okay. And so far... Thank you for your attention. I thank you. We've talked a lot about markets and what to address.